everyone. Sorry about that. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, the internet internet had an issue. So uh, hopefully we'll get Claudia back on here soon. It's so sorry much. about that. No, sorry, no worries. There was an internet issue. I was thinking that we were spitting. Too All right, much so you were. So um, you were. <laughs> what was I? What was I saying last? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. It's it. It got choppy for a second. I can hear you now. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, I was just saying how important it is um, to kind of listen to your intuition and how much culturally people have kind of tried to make fun of that, so that we can disassociate from it. Um, and also like these environmental hazards that are presenting in our food and, and in so many ways are designed to kind of um, distance ourselves from that, from that intuition to make it harder for us to recognize truth. Um, even like uh, physiologically, like there's ways that we can kind of tell, oh, this feels right or this feels wrong. And, and people try to say, oh, you're judging or, oh, she had a feeling um, and, and I was saying how like we can listen to these experts all day or these research papers that are easily, uh, you know, um, manipulated and altered. And there's so many people that I've had conversations with in this last, oh, well, well, where's the research paper on that? Where's the study on that? And sure, you, I, I appreciate that you're looking for that, but you can also kind of trust how, what, how you feel about it, right? And, and do all the research my my process is doing the research and then preying on it and seeing how I feel about it and trusting that you know yeah yeah I'm, I'm I I'm definitely a believer in like uh exploring and following your intuition but also questioning it like it's it's not a perfect rule and you have to understand you need more than more than that but it's certain it's certainly something to try to develop and listen to and pay attention to because if you if you go through situations in life and you start seeing patterns in the way certain you know you come across types of people and you recognize them more and more quickly right. listen to that don't you know try to train that well when when people don't have good relationships or they tend to pick people that aren't good for them in relationships i kind of i say it's you have a broken picker like your your <laughs> intuitions like and everything about that are just like it's faulty. You're not you're not picking up on the right cues. You're taking certain signals and interpreting it the wrong way. Right. And ignoring, um, ignoring it takes it takes a certain humility to be able to say, I am that person. There are these other people in my life that have a better, more successful relationship. What is what is it about that that seems to make it work? And I've always paid attention to men that have had long lasting successful relationships because that's like what do you want if you and then and also i was kind of luckily this came from my mom a little bit from a very young age i took relationships seriously meaning like i wasn't just going to date a girl to date a girl from the jump it's like if we're going to stay together and we're assuming this is going to work then that assumes marriage down the line so we kind of have to be you know if you're getting into a relationship and you're not planning at those stages i feel like you're sort of you know, yeah, we'll get two years in, we'll break it apart. I'll cycle, you know, get a new contract with someone else. We'll see what happens. You know, yeah. that's there's, there's a different level of seriousness. And uh, yeah. I was fortunate enough to take it, take it at the right sort of pitch with that. And um, luckily I'm in six you. years into a very amazing relationship. So I'm, Aww. I'm very happy. That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. I think we need to hear more men say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the alternatives have their um, simplistic appeal. Mm. Right. But if, and if you want to appeal to that, men, married men get laid more because, you know, you don't have to keep searching <laughs> for the next one and the next one and spending time. And that's just the truth. I like that. Hey, that's a good segue so. into uh, what happened in Texas recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and as a woman, you get to say whatever you want. As a man, I have to shut up because apparently, and it's so, and whenever I talk to people on this and they bring that point up, I'm like, you want me to just find a woman that agrees with me so that then you'll actually right. hear me out? Because it's like, it's the same points, it's the same right. arguments, but they'll be like, well, you don't have a vagina, so well, no, thank you. With the whole <laughs> with the whole race thing, they're like, we need people who are black to step up and say something. Oh, you said it. Now you're not black. You can't say it. Or how many? I've been asked like, how many black friends do you have? Like, sorry, I don't count my friends and categorize by like skin color. 
um, yeah. it, it's, it's very similar, you know, but, um, you know, something that I keep saying in that whole conversation is what about the men who've had their, their offspring killed without even having a say? Could, like, who's standing mm. up for mm -hmm. them? And, like, who, nobody cares about them. And I've said that in a few threads and, and, and they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, my, um, I had, I had someone, I had someone in my, um, in my life uh, talk about that, how when he was much younger, um, his girlfriend got an abortion without him knowing. And when he had kids later on, it just haunted him to think that there was some kid out there that could have been, you know, and that, and that, that speaks to that most fundamentally speaks to why there are, there's an objective reason to say there's something wrong with abortion because what, and it, it you have to determine and people don't want to do the work mentally to come to this point. What gives human life value? That is a question. And if you think war is bad, you have to explain why it is. And it's usually because they value human life. Okay, why do you value human life? Okay, now we're at that question again. That's you know, if it's whatever, whatever it may be, murder, whatever. Um, and part of it is your creative and productive potential over the course of your life and the role you get to play over the course of your life. It's that 80 years of potential that all exists right there at the beginning that is being robbed of from that person in exchange for and and this is maybe a condescending way to frame it is the inconvenience of a nine-month pregnancy yep you know i understand it's 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 by it's so it's in your body it's so much more than just an inconvenience like that's that's really almost insulting to say it that way maybe mm -hmm. but it's 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 you know those that's getting closer to the frames of what we're talking about a little bit and that yeah is totally separate from execution and the law and how that all works. You know, if you do believe in abortion when it's to save the life of the mother, um, how do you determine that? Which doctor chooses? How many doctors do you need? What right. if, what if it's true, but the doctors say no, what is the woman's recourse? Like right. there's, there's all of these more interesting and complicated execution questions right. that, that are still on the table for me, but philosophically I've kind of, I feel like I've gotten through a good chunk of it. Right. So, I mean, and the truth is when we're trying to protect or conserve or save anything, we don't know all the different scenarios and we just have to trust that this is going to help, you know, the majority of cases. And then if a case presents itself where we didn't account for that situation, then we look at that situation at that moment that it's presented, you know, just like I think, mm -hmm. you know, like murder is illegal, but if it's in self-defense and we kind of di dissect and, and investigate, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Want, there's nuances want, even yeah go I ahead wanted to no, share go ahead. a couple of personal accounts and relating to this topic if you don't mind so no please do so one is um i so how do i say this okay so i um i've practiced uh celibacy for most of my dating and adult years and i had mm -hmm. a moment with this man that i was in love with where i had a lapse in judgment and i got pregnant and, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and it's funny, right? Like all these years that I was so good about not, <laughs> not engaging in that activity. Um, but I have, you know, it's very, when, when you do break, it's because your biology is like, we need to make a kid now. <laughs> this is the moment. Well, so it yeah, makes sense. Are... Why when you do break, that's going to happen. <laughs> right. Um, and it's very clear to me that, you know, a huge part of why I'm on this earth is to mother my children and I just have a nurturing nature. So I love children. I feel like I can't have enough. <laughs> but um, anyway, so it wasn't even a question for me that I would see this pregnancy through. I, it was a blessing for me. It was a surprise, but I was um, grateful. And if I were to face any judgment for it, I was ready for it because I'm an adult who made a decision and I'm ready to deal with the consequences because that's how adulthood is and it's supposed to be, right? Um, so I, and so the father at the beginning was shocked and happy and then he was in and out and mostly out. I haven't heard from him now for like a year or something. Um, and he's in another country, but I'm so grateful for my baby. And what's interesting that I would love to share to maybe like a woman who found herself in that situation is, and I know everybody's case is different. Um, but we also so quickly think that we know how something is going to turn out and we close ourselves off to huge opportunities and huge experiences that are really valuable to us and that we really uh, need to, ch to cherish. So what's interesting is um, I did face some opposition at the beginning of the pregnancy from people that I love kind of hinting at uh, ending the pregnancy. 
and it, it broke my heart, but I, you know, I understood uh, their stance on it, I guess, or, or their thinking. Um, and so some of the things that I was told was, oh, it's going to ruin your career. Like you're already a single mom of two, like he's not around. How are you going to make it? You know, um, how are you going to, you know, have the money and uh, it's going to ruin your figure. And, um, and so I, I heard that and, those are maybe valid statements or valid doubts, but I have more belief in myself and my ability and, and rising to a challenge and God's help. And I also had to assure that, you know, fortunately we live in this country that has so many resources for people who find themselves in financial trouble or need community or, um, you know, I thought even if, even if my church judged me for getting pregnant in that manner, it wasn't going to stop my relationship, my personal relationship with God. And I knew that I could still find community and find people who would support me. And they were nothing but supportive. If there was judgment, I didn't hear it. And they were there for me. Um, but what's crazy is when I got pregnant. So one dream I had years ago was um, reaching out to this modeling agency in Hollywood. I was living in San Diego at the time. So to me, Hollywood is like, okay, the real deal, right? Um, I happened to reach out to this agency that focused on pregnant models. And, and then they showed interest in me and I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to drive over there and meet with them and see what happens. Like, I'm not tall enough. I don't have enough experience or whatever. Um, and I'm like, I'm just going to meet this person. And she's like an idol to me. It's going to be awesome. And she's going to say no. And, and that's all good. I get there and she's like, okay, you look like the right size. Let me take some pictures. Here's the contract. I'm like, what? I just signed a modeling contract. Like after ch like getting pregnant as a single mom and all this opposition. So, so it made me take my dreams up a notch. Like who would have thought, right? Um, and then it, it also kind of made, gave me more power and more courage to go after dreams. And a lot of people would think, you know, I'm an immigrant, English is my second language. I don't have a lot of help with childcare, with the kids. I may have a lot of opposition, um, you know, single mom of three. And that was actually a fire for me to, to show my kids that they can make their craziest dreams come true and that I was gonna find a way. And it just takes a little bit of resourcefulness, you know, like. Uh, building community, maybe trading, like I traded babysitting with friends, they were happy to support me. Um, I definitely found ways to make things happen. And, um, and so my, my life is beautiful. And it's even more beautiful because of this baby, who is just beyond amazing. And like, he understands me in three different languages. And like, he he's amazing at sports and anything he does. And so anyway, not not that like, someone a baby who didn't do that isn't deserving as well. But to, to my other point, uh, someone very, very close to me um, was pregnant, and then she found out that the baby had Down syndrome during the pregnancy and was kind of planning to um, to have an abortion. And as she was making arrangements for that, she remember she had lost a baby when the day that the baby was born. Um, and she's like, I can't put myself through that again. I can't go through that again and decided to keep the baby. And this baby did have Down syndrome and he doesn't have a lot of medical complications. He doesn't have any medical complications. Um, he's reading and writing and, and potty trained a little later and walked a little later, but is a joy to everyone around him. And, um, and, and I'm being made aware that there are so many people who get those kind of tests while they're pregnant. They're told that the child's gonna have a disability and then get encouraged to, to end the pregnancy. And a lot of people have who've chosen to keep the pregnancy, the baby didn't, the doctors were wrong and there wasn't even a disability. But the children with disabilities still deserve life. Like the only person yeah. who makes a decision on life is God. And then we just deal with the consequences. And, and does anyone stop to think like before abortion was like a, a technology or was available, what did people do before then? You know what I mean? Like people make mm -hmm. it seem like, oh, this is the only way to do things. But how about we like deal with the trauma, deal with like therapy and, and get community and get support. And then we just go through hard things. How about that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Abortion is an interesting, um, uh, it's interesting because it's sort of a, a sin that can kind of cover other sins, so to speak, not to, not to be too judgy about it, but to say like, you know, rape and incest and affairs and lots of things that, would otherwise come to the surface because of the consequences of, of sex uh, and uh, would otherwise, you know, we would know about those things if it wasn't for this sort of first practice. And um, it'd be, uh, I don't know. I don't really know where I was going with that, but I wanted to touch on something before um, my mom is. So my grandpa's a pastor. My mom's dad is a pastor and she had me out of wedlock um, 
when she was 23 or about to turn 23. So she, she dealt with a lot of the same fears and concerns of judgment and dealt with a good amount of it um, yeah. herself. Uh, luckily, luckily once I showed up the my grandpa was a little bit more soft hearted about the whole thing. Yeah. Cause you know, the little baby shows up and you're like, okay, well, whatever she did, I can't judge this little one for it. So I think that yeah, helps. I but, can imagine that, uh, that's, especially as a pastor's daughter, my mom was 16 and my dad was 18 when they had me. <laughs> so I, I understand. Yeah. And thank you, you know, like how grateful. And I asked my mom, like, did you think about that? And I think she, she said she considered it, but like it wasn't, in some ways it wasn't even a question because this life was already created, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the it's, a, it's an important point to just say that, and this is broader, this is about if you grow up in a poor neighborhood in a backwards country, you know, backwards, you know, don't, I don't want to be too judgy with that, but you know, some countries are backwards mm -hmm. in certain important ways like rape and, and the way they treat women and children. But um, the circumstances of your birth don't determine the value of your life. Like, like the one is the entry point. The other one is, like I said, the lifelong potential and just to confuse yeah. those two things is very, and so even with, and so this is where my own philosophy on the situation, let alone like, what anyone would ever accept but my own views on it is incest and rape are tragic and horrible and there are lots of concerns but does that then negate the life of that child because right. those are the circumstances under which it entered this world i don't think so i don't think it negates that that i definitely would rather have existed under those circumstances than to have been aborted mm, personally well said. right you know I so mean yeah, yeah, I can say, like, my mom is not a fan of my dad, and my dad treated her poorly. I love them both, and I'm grateful to be alive. Um, but but I will say, you know, there's an awesome interview with um, Angela Staten King on YouTube, if it still exists, through, with The Breakfast Club. And she talks about how she she had been raped, and she chose she got pregnant. She had this baby. It's like, she's like, my beautiful daughter. I'm so glad I had her. And why would it be illegal for me to kill my rapist, but not the baby I created with him? And, and you know, people, it, it, was, it was interesting to hear from somebody who had actually done, because so many people are like, oh, what if this happened? Well, here's somebody who actually went through it, and this is what she said. So how about we listen yeah. to her, too? Yeah, and that's interesting. It, it, it is so interesting when people are like, they have a real debate over the death penalty, but mm -hmm. abortion, it's like, it's a women's right. It's a wow. woman's right. Like. It's framed, you know, very differently. And um, it, yeah, and, it, yeah. And, and to some degree, you know, so like with, um, with socialized healthcare, right? The lack of innovation, the lack of new drugs created, all of that you don't see. It's, it's things that just never show up. So you don't see it like get lost. Mm -hmm. And in the same sense, like um, because you don't see the kid, because you don't see the baby being killed or whatever, you don't have that, like it's not a person out there that you're seeing mm -hmm you you can dehumanize and 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 it's you know it's funny because the left is so much about not marginalizing or devaluing the other or other human beings and in, in all these ways but then in this most fundamental way you know they don't want that and i think it's getting back to my earlier point it's legit that a lot of people would rather keep having sex and having abortion as a background option to handle their problems than morally face the question of you know is this okay like it's yeah. I, in my opinion lots of people in the back of their mind they're like well if we made abortion illegal i can't keep having the same kind of lifestyle that i've been having and so mm -hmm. that is the threat wow you know? that's good yeah i i also i'm curious to do research on how it affects a woman's body to do that not only once but then multiple times and how it affects her reproductive capabilities in the future yeah i've heard so i know of one girl who got three abortions by about 15 16 and she yeah. had to have a special surgery to be able to have children later on and it gave her like a little two three-year window and then that was it and they got three yeah. kids in that in that time and and that was it but yeah so it does damage if it's done um you know uh well, too often or too because like Again, like a, a you're, there's a biological message being sent to your body when you have a miscarriage or anything like that. And that doesn't mean you're, it means you're probably not healthy enough to be able to carry the baby. So you need to take care of yourself a little bit more and try to try to, and it's not always that case. Some people are very 
poor on their health and they can just make babies till the end of the universe. So it's not like an absolute rule, but, um, what I I mean is like when you have a miscarriage, your, your internal signals are going to screw your mind up. You're going to, your body's going to be telling you the most tragic, horrible, horrendous thing has happened. And so when you get an abortion, there's got to be some, some similar thing to that. Like there's absolutely post, uh, post, um, Traumatic. Oh, gee. Depression. What did I just say? But depression after having a, yeah. uh, a, a miscarriage. That was the word I was yeah. trying to search for. There's so absolutely actually, that phenomenon. So, yeah, I've had a miscarriage and I can't imagine like choosing to do that to yourself. And, and I, I went through it naturally. I didn't have to have a procedure to do it. Um, not only is it emotionally um, heartbreaking, but uh, physically, it's, uh, I mean, I think they say like the pains are similar to labor. Um, that it's like, <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but violent bleeding. Like my mom said that because she had one and I'm like, that's a great way to, to describe it. But it's not just bleeding, it's pain. And it's, and then it's like, you know, you wonder like your body almost feels like it's like attacking itself. And, and then you kind of identify with some of that too. Like, am I not, you know, meant to do this or can my body not handle it? Am I a real woman if I can't, you know, <laughs> there's so many aspects to it. And that's another part that upsets me so much is in the places where uh, not only is like abortion legal, but they want to put, I think Newsom wanted to put like some abortion pill available in colleges and, and make it so there's not even like parental consent. Like if a, a minor has an abortion, I, going through that alone without support, my gosh, like that messes somebody yeah. up for life. It's not just and, and like, time and inconvenience. And like, and that is the best, like when an adult, gets an abortion there's many many different explanations but when a young child gets an abortion you know a 12 13 14 15 year old there's more questions than just who did they decide to consensually have sex with like every single time you know because lots of 12 13 14 year olds wouldn't necessarily like know how to get it done exactly you know (laughs) necessarily like they're like not and there are plenty that do i'm not saying like that's that's a hard and fast rule. But when you have a, a kid that young, you know, you, you gotta like there, maybe there should be a genetic test done. Like, like let's screen for that. Let's just see if this baby that's being aborted is in any way a product of incestual activity. Yeah. Like yeah. that would be a good thing. Just, just for the sake of being like, okay, someone in the family raped this young girl. So we need to investigate. Like, it's not the kind, like many people would say, Oh, that's forcing something or that's too over the line. But to me, not doing that and not uh, having that level of concern for young rape victims, like as a collective to say, we'll all sacrifice this to try to help make this happen. Like that seems worse. That seems worse to me. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I can't imagine going through that as a victim and then saying, yeah, go, go test me and go look at my body and to see evidence and DNA. And Oh my gosh, like it's so much, the whole thing, the whole, everything is traumatic. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and yeah, how, you know, how do you, how do you square that? How do you handle that? Um, yeah. Is it that, that kind of a thing, like, I don't know. I think it's more of a concern when it comes to, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it would be too traumatic of a thing to expect of everybody or if like, if you're going to go have an abortion, um, what I don't know, like, would that would that have to be done? I don't know. This There's is all, where, there, if, if they did that and they didn't weren't straightforward about it, it would be very dangerous and, and dumb and create all kinds of problems. So maybe that is not a good idea. There, <laughs> I'm right, there, there's on that instances one. where like uh, somebody is um, sexually abused and we wish they would have said something and taken the guy to jail so that it can't happen to anyone else. But at the same time, I can totally sympathize and understand why they wouldn't want to face somebody in a court with a bunch of strangers to talk about this and go through all the whole process. So it's a really um, hard and very personal decision. Um, and this is where I can say like- Because you're forcing people to relive it. Right. I can take my mind to all sorts of places and potential scenarios. Um, and I don't have the answers to all of them, but I can say that I stand against killing babies. Like it's, it's, that part is very black and white. Now, like I said, 
if you kill somebody for self-defense and you investigate that and, and then you go through that process. So to me, it's the same way. Like, let's make uh, killing babies illegal. And if there's a special situation, then we go investigate that and try to help that specific situation. But we don't need to like uh, make it like a, like a transactional uh, routine of killing babies because of one or two people or whatever, right? 1%, 2% of people who mm -hmm. have a specific situation. And, and it's funny because we were like pro, pro choice and pro life, like pro life people are also pro choice, like the choices in the bedroom. And then you can also killing is a choice, like whoever wants to kill anybody, they have that choice, right? But then there's consequences. So it's not like there's nobody like uh, at your house saying like, you can't do this when you step out or you can't do that. With there, you can do whatever the hell you want, but there are circumstances listed for each one of those actions, you know? Yeah, it's not it's there's no controlling of women's bodies actually happening. It's a restriction of behavior to say you cannot go do this thing, which is, you know, a very it's not the same sort of barrier to uh, to your human sovereignty or to your body or anything like that. But um, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. There is a line of thinking that like there aren't really medically necessary circumstances for abortion. There are medically necessary situations to try to have a premature C-section or something to get the baby out early, but right. not necessarily that the baby is a direct and immediate threat that needs to be killed in order to solve that particular problem. And I think, and that is something I haven't looked at, at the evidence of. So it's an interesting line of inquiry. And Tyler Bluntman, I'll give him respect, uh, is the one that is the one pushing that and, and made that argument. And I think it's it's a it's a, a beautifully uh it's a beautiful and groundbreaking idea <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, to be looking know. at it in that new frame and i like that i love that about human beings that we can do that mm -hmm. what's interesting about tyler too is he says he's not religious and he's all for you know against abortion which is really interesting yeah he says he's agnostic which tells me that he um believes that he doesn't believe in like the strict materialistic, there is no meaning in the world nihilistic. Like, cause the, the thing is nihilism is like a philosophy that negates philosophy. If there is no meaning, then there's no philosophy to be had. Nothing matters. And there is no coherency in the universe. So it's like, it's a black hole of, of, and, and it's interesting. Andrew Clavin, who's a, a, a guy on the daily wire podcast and stuff talked about like, if it's true that there's no truth then that can't be true. <laughs> right. right if there's no structure to the universe you cannot identify that through objective structure to then establish that there is no structure like it's it's incoherency in and of itself right um and that that's a and i thought that was a brilliant way to put it and it's it's very true that there is so to to from tyler's position there's truth out there to be to be discovered but he doesn't know which one to necessarily say i'm on this team yet but right. I and I point and I pointed him in the direction. Hi, hello. <laughs> I pointed him in the direction of the Jordan Peterson lectures on Genesis, and um, and uh, if he if he checks them out and likes them, uh, I think it'll it'll he'll blossom into something else, different. Right. And they might still consider himself an agnostic, but it'll it'll add to his game. So right. that'll be interesting. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we got to cut it off here. It's about to be one, or it might already be <laughs> one one oh one. So. Right. We'll cut it here. Have a great one. And so um, I appreciate much. you so much for coming on. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And thank you for what you're doing to, to get people to just have conversations and, and think. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm doing, doing my part. I have a good it. one. <laughs> Bye.